Hi everyone, it's uh, Tuesday the 15th of March and the time is now 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Yes, I'm filming this straight after filming the uh, Windows, 9, Windows 98 rebuild. So, on the bench, or in this case worktop, I've got this thing. I pulled out of the uh, skip the other day. I've got this cover off, so I'll just give you a peek in here. So that's what we've got under the cover. We've got the power supply. We can see like a network processor expansion card. I think that's what that says on that. We'll have a good look at that in a minute. And a 20 gig Mac store hard drive. Um, I've already, uh, I've actually already had the main board out because I was trying to figure out how to get into it. So, and uh, what you've got to do, you can take this cover off, which just gives you access to that expansion card and hard drive. But to get to all the RAM and everything, it's under here. And what you've got to do is undo two screws from there, like so. And then you push these two levers down, or pull that one down, together, and it just pops out and the whole tray slides forwards. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute. But first, I just want to see if I can get it to do anything. So, power switch is off. Power's connected. Now, I did, as you can probably see on the front there, I've taken the plastic cover off here and it revealed the uh, mouse ports and VGA socket. I thought it had to have one somewhere. So we'll plug that in there. We'll get our uh, mouse connected and the keyboard. Like so. I've noticed there is no sort of soft start button on the front here. It's just the uh, main switch there. Okay, so the keyboard did the uh, flash. Now, I don't know if you can hear that. But it is making a tick, 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 tick sound. And that's coming from the power supply. And uh, I will... Um, confess, I have already turned this on, so I already knew about that. Um, I'm not smelling it now, but I did smell something earlier that smelled a bit hot, so I've got a feeling this has failed. So, that's why I'm going to bring in this. <laughs> so I know this is a good working power supply. So, We'll turn that one off. Um, not quite sure if I can get in here to pull that off. Just because of how tightly packed I've got this. I can bend that up. There we go. Plug that one in. Um, I think, at least for now, I'm just going to plug the hard drive one in. Because, uh, as I said, I want to see if it's going to do anything. Because that is the only fault with this. And if it does boot, what we've actually got on it. It's really awkward to get that power supply connector in there. There we go. So in theory, all I've got to do is make sure that is off. Hopefully. It's not doing anything. I'll just turn the monitor off and on again. <clears throat> Make sure that it's connected. 
audio input. To be fair, this hard drive's not doing anything either. Right, let's just do a little test, shall we? Is it the hard drive? It's not going to work. Uh, it's got SATA connectors on it. Uh, I'm going to plug a power onto this one just to see if this one spins up. Which it does. So, I'm going to guess this drive is dead. So, unfortunately, I can't power anything up or boot it up. Maybe that power supply failing damaged the hard drive. I have had that happen at least once. If something has gone short in that one. this hard drive out and I'll test it further at some other point but oh. there we go it would be nice if I could do so I don't know maybe I could use that as an ordinary computer if not I'm just gonna take some parts out of this and then just ditch what's left because I don't think anyone could use it it's obviously quite old. Um, we'll find out what the RAM is in a minute. So if I can just get hold of those, pull those down like that, give you nice handles to get hold of. And this whole tray slides out like that. Then you've got these to unplug. And there we go. So we've got the processor, the motherboard, and this expansion card here with the well, this here, which says media services processor expansion card sorry warning for use only with within Nortel Networks approved equipment caution electrostatic sensitive avoid touching connector he says while reading that while touching the connector So looking at that, that is just an ordinary computer motherboard, just been designed, you know, specifically for this machine. See? Processor, RAM. Well, this one's got two Ethernet sockets, two USBs, and a serial. Very interesting, I have to say. What I might do is plug this back in and see if I can get that other hard drive to do anything. Because um, you never know, it might just boot into normal Windows. But uh, I was just thinking that would actually. Uh, Double, oh. That would tell me whether um, the motherboard's working or not, won't it? I hope. So I'm going to take this off out of the way for now. Or should I actually leave this in? So there's the cables I need. Tell you what, we'll do that first before I start playing around with that. Don't need that connected though. Pull that through. I need to connect that. <coughs> um. Got 
put, push those both up at the same time as well. Right. Is that me being a dummy? Yep. Try and plug the old ribbon cable in upside down. Don't you think you're not using that power supply anymore? It doesn't really work. It's got an issue. There's a good chance that if it killed the hard drive, it could have killed everything else. could be on the main board or it could be with this cable because I'll just unplug this and that hard drive starts spinning up which means it may not be a dead drive after all let's just plug this this one like so and we'll see if this one will power up with the ribbon cable disconnected which it does right okay I'm diagnosticing I forgot an important one, didn't I? I forgot the 4-pin 12-volt connector. Could that have been the problem? Might help if I actually plug it in the right way. So I might just completely reconnect this one. Let's see if it does anything. If it doesn't, then I'll unplug it again. that ribbon cable in that still isn't spinning up. And for fact if I do it this it starts spinning up. feeling whatever be the issue is actually on the board in here just it's not that cable or that socket just try the original one black cable in there
trying to plug it in around the wrong way. Yes. <laughs> Nothing. It's dead, Jim. Is there going to be a problem with this or this? One end. I'm not sure which yet. I just took that expansion card thing out. I don't know. I'm not going to do anything. She's dead. actually boot this hard drive up. Hmm. Okay, the next plan. Get all of this out of the way. I'll see if I can figure out how to uh, get this hard drive out of here and we'll rig it up to an external motherboard. Like uh, the one I pulled out of the computer in the other video. Um, to get that out, you've got to uh, technically go through the back door. That's still connected, that is, isn't it? There we go. Feeling. Well, I know I'm not going to put this back together now because there's obviously a, an issue with it somewhere. for that loud clang. Whee! Flicking screws everywhere. Um, I think I need one. Which one is it? Top one. One end into there. One end into here. We need something to supply the juice. So, where is it? These. We have onboard graphics, that's a good thing. We don't got to mess around with the card. 
Hard drive is going to need some power. I hope this works. We've got to have at least one positive, positive haven't we? Um, what I'm trying to find now is a little power switch. One of my umpteen boxes of cables under here. Um, do I have one in here? System B, that's good. We're we'll actually uh, do into anything. Bloody keyboard, shouldn't I? I forgot to do that. But at least we've now proved that the hard drive does actually work, and the issue is. It's got Windows NT on it, version 4, server pack 6, build 1381. We've had some success, I know the hard drive works, it's just the rest of it doesn't. <laughs> Not to worry, we'll pull the rest of it out and have a look at it. Maybe either something failed on the motherboard and killed the power supply, or something failed on the power supply and killed the motherboard. Either way, power supplies are not supposed to tick. Not like that. Right. Whilst doing whatever it's got to do, I'm going to uh, yank this tray out of here again, because it's about the only uh, interesting part of this. I will do, I will actually have a look at all of these boards to see um, yeah I'll have a look at these a lot closer to see if I can see anything on them um, anything obvious that is that might be uh, causing a problem I mean, could be the RAM, I could try changing the RAM, see if it does anything. 
I don't know if I can change the processor because I don't know if I've actually got one that's going to work. Um, I think I might, while I'm at it, just pull out that board as well. Um, well it's going to make it easier to tinker around with. one because I can't actually see a lot going on on this board at least not this side are we doing anything no it's just weird that the hard drive will not spin up when connected I thought it was just four screws holding it down, but there's a bracket here as well. There we go, I think. Now, one more screw holding it in. Well, it's not going to be this, I don't think, because it's just, well, what looks like an interconnecting board to me. There is a jumper on here for PSU status. BCM3 interface card. What do I do with the board? That's Danny. Now that just goes into what looked like an ISA slot. It's a Foxconn motherboard. Well, at least that slot is Foxconn. It has a good, nice, tight connection in there. That's not a problem. Um, so I'm thinking it could be a RAM thing, or it could be a processor, or it could be something else. Either way, I don't have the means to fix it, I don't think. I can try RAM, but I don't think it's going to do anything. Uh, if I want to find the correct pot. Find it. Go back. Ooh. Find something in here to chuck in it, I should think. Stick a couple of 64s in there, or well, at least I've confirmed where the issue is. So I'm just going to stick a couple of these in. Unusual sticks. That's been confirmed. Can I? I can shut that off. Right. It's a lot of plugging in and unplugging and all sorts, isn't it? Doing this. Right. Whoop. So we'll bring our system back in. Now that's where the hard drive connected. There is another one there, which actually says primary IDE. So why was the hard drive connected to secondary? I'll put it on there for now. If I can't get it to do anything on there, I can always move it. some residual that's 
got the same lights flashing on here. Maybe these lights on the front here are actually flashing some sort of error code. Well, yeah, that is not spinning up again. That is, but it's not one for this. Aren't you wondering? If I should try just reseating that processor. We don't know if we will do something or it isn't. So let's take that off. It's been a while since I've done one of these. We're running a little Intel. I may actually have a processor for this, you know. No thermal paste on it. It's all sort of uh, gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> little Intel Celeron. dust in here so you know, that could be part of the problem. A bit of dust has gotten in somewhere. Do something! Oh, it's not got any lights flashing up on me. know what they mean, I don't know if it's flushing a code or what, no, I can't find the front panel. Surely if the processor was completely dead though, you wouldn't even get activity on the front, would you? Or would you? I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm not seeing anything obvious. The caps around the processor look okay. Do I actually have an old Intel processor I can shove in there? I've got all sorts of old crap in this cover. I must have some. I'll figure out how to open the box. There we go. And in fact, you've got an Intel chip here. It's a Pentium 3 though, so I doubt that's going to work on that. <laughs> oh, I've got loads of other AMDs, I think, under the bottom there. And some P4s. People be like, why do you keep all that old crap, all that old processors and whatnot? Well, that's exactly why, because they're old and obsolete. If I see anybody that's looking for something like that, I can say, yeah, I've got one. I can sell you, give to you, borrow to you, you know, whatever. <laughs> no, is the answer to that question. I haven't got one. So if it is the Celeron that's gone the way of the dodo, there isn't a lot I can do about it. It is a dead! Mm. Is that the rubber band? It's a rubber band. Well. We had some success. We know the hard drive is working. We know this doesn't. <laughs> um, at the moment, I don't think I've got a processor I could put in it. Um, I 
I might have. Just bear with me for a minute. Right, I've got these old motherboards. If we're lucky, absolutely identical coolants, coolers, not coolants. I didn't put that cooler on there properly either. Too far over to this side. So, we'll take that off, we'll take this one off as well. We'll give it a try, might as well give both a try actually. Uh, put this on round the right way, it's easier this way. It's easy just to get to this little tab with the screwdriver to hook it on over. Like that. If this doesn't work, I will try the other one. And then again, I could fire up this old motherboard just to drill what the heck that was. <laughs> Some work being done there, I'm in a flat downstairs. I've been having work done for the past week actually. Now, same flashing lights on the front, so I'm going to assume that it, that's not the issue either. Either that where it is, and it doesn't like that processor. So. That actually sounds like a dying drill. Oh no, I know what it sounds like. It sounds like a grinder or something. To cut some stonework. Yeah. I'm surrounded by building sites at the minute and work. Because <laughs> so they're working in the old building across the car park there. Um, at some point they're going to be building on the land directly opposite here. And is that hooked under there? It's just making life difficult. I've been wanting to do this video for about a week, but with all that bloody noise, it was a lot worse than this as well. Because um, I think the chap has just had a wet room fitted. Now that one's a completely different processor, so that one's not going to work. Totally different. I'm going to reconnect the other motherboard. Arseholes to that, we'll deal with it later. <laughs> no point putting any of this back together because I'm absolutely scared. It wouldn't be something as simple as that, would it? Motherboard's here with one in. Let's just change it and try it. Because I know these motherboards are good. Okay. The 
this is the last thing I'm going to try. If it doesn't work after this, then sod it. After a week, I thought they would have uh, been done with that wet room by now. so I can rescue off of that. <laughs> I'm just dropping things and breaking things today, aren't I? Yeah, I think I have just broken this. One of the tabs I broke off that hold the uh, ball in place. Oh well. I have actually got more in the cupboard, so I'm not worried. I wonder why I didn't just have that, you know, directly on the motherboard, because that's all that is. It's just an interface board that you connect your power to and your drives and then plug it into the motherboard. So why these aren't just directly on the motherboard, I don't know. It seems like a, an odd way to do that. I might keep hold of that because that's quite an interesting looking board. No. <laughs> uh, that might stay up there for a little while, at least. Right here, then. We've got that ram in there. What ram is that? That's not the same. Got that back in the cupboard. Out of the way. Right, that is it for this video. Can't do much else. I think it's dead. <laughs> um, could be that the processor has died and the one I put in there just it doesn't like or it could be something else. Uh, I have no idea. Looking at that socket, that does look like an ISA socket, doesn't it? It looks like it to me. Nortel Networks. Never mind. I might salvage some of this hardware, actually. These screws. I have found that such tiny little screws do come in handy. Well, I have plenty of scrap to go up, won't I? So I can take the hard drive out of that. Not the caddy. Um, don't need the caddy. I've actually got room for another hard drive on that. Would it be useful to keep a hard drive caddy like that? You know, if I'm working open bench like this, I can just whack a hard drive in there and not stop it getting knocked about as much, wouldn't it? I might keep hold of it, I don't know. I might just chuck it in the bin. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. 
and I'll talk to you again in the next one. Bye. Bye. <clears throat>